Hi, and welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and so much to share. I'm going to start by telling you that this show, Dare to Dream, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. I just found out that we are number 200 in self-improvement in the USA on Apple Podcasts. Also, the show ranks 148 in South Africa, 20 in Vietnam. It's so cool like that you're listening in all these countries. We're top 10 in several countries, and we're 21 in Slovakia. And thank you. I love getting these statistics and finding out that you have a dream and creating your dream is as important to you as it's been in my life and continues to be, right? Because dreams are fluid. It's not just a one and done. It's something we create. And once we're done with it, living it out into the world, of course, more is revealed and the next right piece comes along and it's incumbent on us to create that too. Or it'll go to somebody else. So do create your dreams because it's the greatest feeling. And I believe it is the song that our soul came here to sing. Dare to Dream is available on over 40 syndicated outlets. So join us. You can go to Apple, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, Stitcher, Anchor FM, BBS Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, Pandora, and more. And do leave a review because it allows people who love this kind of transformation conversation to find the show as well. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. We love the work that they do out in the world. So if you're ready for some really fast energy healing or you want to become a facilitator, they are located all over the country doing workshops as well as online. Go to Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N, here, H-E-E-R.com and Access Consciousness. I want to start out the show by sharing that I was reading an interview with the actor, and I'm pretty sure producer, Sean Hayes from Will and & Grace, and he said something that was kind of riveting for me. He was asked for advice, and Sean Hayes said, I always implore people to ask themselves two things. What do you want, and what are you waiting for? <laughs> What do you want and what are you waiting for? And he says that younger people look at him like, if this idiot could do it, anybody can. Of course, Sean has to end that with some comedy. So that's my question for you. What is it that you want and what is it that you are waiting for? I keep pulling back the curtain and telling on myself right now because I want to propel myself forward. I wouldn't say that this was my dream, but I will absolutely tell you that the divine gave me a piece recently, which was so surprising and then unexpected for me, but it's about shamanism and to go study shamanism. And uh, so I'm pursuing that. I'm finding a couple of schools and some of them necessitate leaving the country for a little bit to go study. So that's my big ass dream is around shamanism. Who would have thought? But here I am pursuing it. What about you? What are you waiting for? Do you want to learn how to revitalize and recreate your life? I hope so, because my guest today is Lisa Gar. She is the host of The Aware Show and also host of the Hay House Being Aware Show. And in the Los Angeles market, Listeners hear Lisa on KPFK 90.7 FM and in New York on WBAI 99.5 FM. Lisa is a regular weekend host on Coast to Coast FM, uh, Coast to Coast AM, syndicated on over 600 stations around the world. And her current series on Gaia TV is called Inspirations on Gaia. Lisa is the author of the best-selling book, Becoming Aware, How to Repattern Your Brain and Revitalize Your Life. As a result of healing a tragic brain trauma, Lisa found her own voice and became a voice of change for the world. <laughs> Lisa, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. So much fun. It's so great to be on. Thank you so much. I love what you've created. This is, and I, I completely understand and respect it. I think this is awesome. Thank you. 
Yeah, thanks. I feel like we're sisters doing such kindred things out into the world. Yes. And so to marry you to my audience, yes. um, some many of whom I'm sure already know you, and if they don't, then let's get them on the bandwagon too. So yes. I want to start because it was so interesting when I researched you, Lisa, that you have over the years added shifted radio stations, venues where you put out your show, getting your hosting, getting your voice out there. You know, for me, that's fascinating because I resonate. I've been doing this almost 13 years. So I appreciate that. And I want to know about the Being Aware show and the Aware show starting and how you've navigated this and how you've ended up where you are right now doing what you're doing right now. I am on my 20th year. I, I can't even believe it's been 20 years because it's not, it's not anything I ever set out to do. I never set out to have a radio show or be a broadcaster, although I, I went to school for broadcast journalism just because it was fascinating to me, but I, I, you know, I didn't set out to be a broadcaster. And I was working in television production and behind the scenes and producing segments. And I thought that's what I wanted to do. And I got to know and make friends with a lot of the people you work with because you're together 24 seven. And so they were mountain bikers. We, they took me mountain biking. They were crazy mountain bikers. I mean, crazy good. So I had to keep up and wound up getting into the race circuit with them, which was all great because it was just a great way to blow off steam. But in one series final race of a California state championship, it was very brutal conditions. It was 108 degrees, it was 5,000 feet of climbing, and it was 24 miles, I can't remember, 27 miles. It was brutal. And I wound up passing out on the bike at the top of the mountain, and I didn't know it. I had no idea. All I knew is that I saw that there was this girl in front of me and she was in first place and I was in second place, and somehow the thought came on, if I could just pass her on this descent, cross over the bridge, I've got this, I'm done. And I think that's what the last thought was, is I'm done. And do you know, were you dehydrated? What was going on in your body? I must have been. I, I don't know because I drank, I had a hundred ounce, ounce camel back in my back and I had electrolytes, but I think I hit a rock with my head because my helmet was shattered. So when they went to go find the helmet, it was cracked in like 13 places. And that wouldn't have happened if I just hit the ground even though I was in the mountains, but I must have hit a rock. And I must have, you know, the helmet was dislodged off my head. My body was, was shredded. And I, I don't know, what, all I know is that I was unconscious at the bottom of this mountain and my body was trying to get back onto my bike. In the momentum of my body from being in the race for that long, wanted to get on the bike. It's a thing that happens at the adrenaline but my mind didn't, and my mind went somewhere else. And it wasn't even my mind. I, Debbie, I found a state of pure bliss. I found, I get chills talking about, I found a place of just pure, expanded seamlessness. And it, it, it exists all around us at all times. It's completely available to us. I do not suggest cracking your head, <laughs> but I do know that I couldn't have slipped into this state being whatever you want to call it if I was pursuing these goals, other, other goals, and, and being such a person of, of pursuing goals. I really found that everything was so expanded and connected that we are all together in everything we do. And that, that state is indelible in my mind. And I don't know if I was because I, my body was failing and I was, I was even tuned into the medics that came to the side of my body. I was tuned into their purpose and their thoughts and their feelings because I remember it wasn't mine. Were I you remember down on your body? Were you actually separate from your body? Totally separated. Didn't feel the body at all. No awareness of the body. The body was being put on stretchers and it was throwing up and it was, there was a helicopter that came to put the body in the helicopter. The body was failing. And then I, I realized so much from this, Debbie. I realized, first of all, we're so much bigger than we think we are. 
We are so much bigger than we think we are. And we play so small into these little containers of bodies. And then we fight and quibble with each other in those little containers. And then we get those containers sick. And it's not necessary. None of it is. If we could just connect into the space of all that is. And that's such an ambiguous term. But you and I feel a connection. And we're in two different locations. But we're looking into each other's eyes. And we feel each other's energy. And that's palpable. That's, that's a thing. And I love that. And I know. That's why I know that this is this is a space that's accessible to everyone. So shortly after that, dealing with a lot of memory loss and a lot of injury and a lot of brain trauma took me a good half, maybe through going through EEG and neurofeedback and a zillion trillion supplements that I discovered along the way to find that it's a daily practice. You have to, I have to reset my brain every day. I have to find ways that re-motivates the neurochemistry in the brain to uptake the serotonin, to find the dopamine from somewhere, and to get all those happy neurochemicals together to then have a great day and come up with solutions and be resilient and find my way. And that's how the radio show arose, was me finding all these brilliant people that I have, was they were helping me, mm. someone who was a, a psychic, um, who became my mentor, someone who was a, a neurofeedback specialist. I had neuroscientists. I have acupuncturists. I went to all the alternative methods because there weren't any other, there were no medical solutions for an injured brain at the time. Post-concussive syndrome, what was that? It was 20 years ago. So that was how I fell upon synchronicity. I sat in many, many days sitting in in my living room just meditating and grounding and running my energy and asking for and finding this veil being very thin and trying to find that space again that space of seamless connected consciousness and i found that through synchronistic events a friend said there's a radio station that's going out that's being sold to a korean network and the drive time hosts are leaving and they're looking for a host do you want to do this never done radio never <laughs> I just had produced television and I kind of had an idea of how it should flow, what segments should be like. And ha it started there in Los Angeles on KYPA in a tiny studio on the high rise on Sunset Boulevard. And then, you know, that came into the next thing. And then I got onto KPFK and WBAI and, K and Gaia and Hay House. And in 4,000 something interviews later, I, I don't see this as a job. I see that as a destination, as a destiny, as a, as a dream, as you say, as a dharma. I just, this is my love. This is my passion. This is my mission. What and does it continue to give you? Synchronistic meetings with people uh, that you admire and get yes. to meet. Yeah, talk about that. Okay, first of all, it reminds me that there's humanity in this world. Look at you, look at the beautiful bright light you are. And I get to talk to you. I get to talk to you for an hour. How cool is that? How cool is it to talk to Greg Braden and find out about the, the, how the shifts of the planet 11 million years ago happened? And how amazing is it to talk to Dr. Dane? Oh, Dr. Dane. He's got a, such a special place in my heart. He helped me with my father's passing. I mean, literally helped me. Unbelievable. Was that recent? Yes. 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 And it was in a moment where my dad was struggling so much. And I called Dane and I said, Dane, please, I don't know what this is. And he said, are you ready? Because this is kind of my specialty. He went into my dad's spirit and he escorted him off the planet. He died like that. Mm. Couldn't think of a better way to do it. Wow. You know, wow. And, and from a cab, Dane was in a cab in Japan. He goes, okay, give me a minute. Got in the back of the cab. He's like, are you ready? At that moment, my father passed with Dane escorting him into the heavens. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, how do you get this? I mean, luck. <laughs> how do you get more blessed than this, to have access to these incredible people on our planet. And it is my mission to, you know, just blast this to the world, just to let the world know we have access to these incredible new thought leaders, healers, thinkers. On either side of my desk, your mind walls are floor to ceiling with their books. I love 
I loved these thinkers, these leaders, these practitioners, these authors. I love them all. And I've now they're friends and I could, that couldn't be cooler. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. And you know, master level conversation and friendships with influencers like this who yes. can feel powerful, beautiful friends. Um, so it's so yummy to hear you say this. And yeah. I love and the idea of the books, their books, their words yes. surrounding you. It's oh. um, like pillars. And then I get to broadcast their information every day. I get to lift these leaders into a bigger platform every day. And How that's smart of you to do this starting. I mean, it just occurs to me, you know, two decades ago, that's pretty radical. When you think about it, this was not the conversation du jour back then. No. But the oh fact that you would open this up and have that kind of, you know, mission, it's not even a leap of faith that you were so driven by this accident to say, I'm stepping in and introducing all these people yes. in radio, which yes. I've never done, yes. but I'm making that commitment. Because it healed my brain. And not only is this possible that you can do the same, but here's how. I'm a big how person. Here's this person, and here's this person, and here's this angel communicator, and here's someone that's a psychic, and here's Wayne Dyer who talks about you are, you know, whatever. This, he, I have a whole Wayne Dyer section here. Of the, your intention becomes your reality. Nobody was saying that back then. And he was, you know, really brought the law of attraction into form through his all of his incredible work on intention setting. Mm -hmm. And that was you know, such a great mark in the world. And yeah, I, I mean, he, that wasn't the conversation. And I'm on a left-wing liberal radio station. I mean, they're talking politics all day. And here I come in talking about angels. I never advertised. It just was word of mouth because this is what people wanted to hear because they were talking about it anyway. On their phone with their friends or they're, you know, going to these various things. I have a squishy ball in my hand, sorry. <laughs> What's that for? Is that helpful? It's stress ball. I don't know. <laughs> Not a brain thing. <laughs> it in my hand all the time. <laughs> but um, but I that's you know that's what I get is like those that level of communication with people help me heal, mm -hmm. and it will help other people heal. And to have those conversations in the middle of, and I'm on free speech TV now, in the middle of talk 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 about progressive politics and all of this, then you come in with this beautiful practical how. How do you set an intention? How do you eat right so you can have clear thoughts? How do you get to know your relationships better and heal them? How do you assist people who are passing? How, I mean, it's all the same conversation. If you really think about it, Debbie, it's all the same thing. Politics, Trump, catalyst, transformation. It's really all the same thing. So... <laughs> So here you are, you're in a mountain bike race, you're trying to think in first place, it's right there, but instead you have this traumatic injury and it sounds like you are really, really lucky and we're very lucky to still have you here today. What was it like for you to come back from that accident? That was a definite journey. I lost a lot of my memory from my childhood, which was you know, gone when you would, and conversations, my short term memory that I was having, that I had a company at the time, and I still have that. My employees were saying back to me, well, You told your client this, nothing, no recollection. It's like going and searching your computer for a file that's been deleted, mm. and it's not even there, ever there. And it was, it's scary because I was starting to second guess myself and wonder if I even, how could I not remember those conversations? I would see people from my childhood no recollection, embarrassing. And, and I didn't want to go to the whole brain injury thing. So it was kind of like, I felt like I was hiding it. And it, it was, it's a very uncomfortable feeling when you have that level of memory loss. And so I had to create a daily practice for myself. First of all, I write everything down. Everything's either written and I have it in my phone now and everything is accountable. Still to this day, you have all these practices. Yeah. Yeah. I write everything down. I do. I just have to, just, it helps me remember. I mean, I have notebooks and I have notes in my phone and all of that just because it really just helps me stay. But also the practice of reading information and doing a radio show the next day and reading the information and doing the show the next day has really helped me improve mm. that practice every day where I absorb information and then spit it out and recreate it the next day has really helped. And that's why the brain exercises that 
I recommend it that people do and they can get any, all these memory, great memory um, programs that are out now are, they really do work. They're really great. It's an exercise. It's just like any other muscle. You just have to exercise it. So when you did brain gymnastics, I understand in order to get fully back, can you give an example of brain gymnastics, some kind of an exercise that's easy that somebody might want to do? Yes. Oh, there's so many fun ones. Um, one of the things that I do is I create, if I have to remember something and say there's a list of things I need to remember, I remember it in a story. Jim Quick teaches this. This is a great story. A great way to remember things is you remember the story of it. So if I have to call Kate and I need to remember to get eggs at the store and then I need to send an email to find out about a contract, I will simply say, Kate was looking for eggs in her contract. And I'll just remember things that way. And or a grocery list, you can make it fun and remember things that way. Especially if people tend to be forgetful. It's great to create these little stories in your mind of the, your things to do, your list of things to do. And just to do it as an exercise is, it's a lot more fun that way. Um, one of the other things I love to do is, I love looking at something, closing your eyes and remembering what it is that you saw. So it helps you build your photographic memory as well. That's great, but also for me, I read things on a different level also. It's not just the fun techniques, but I've also learned to heighten my other senses. So if I am in an experience with someone and I can't remember their face, I will remember the energy and the essence of that human being. So I look into people's hearts when I see them and see their essence and their vibration and their soul. And that having a memory impediment is great because it teaches you, just like someone with a hearing impediment, will learn more to listen to people's mouths or with hands. It just heightens other senses and develops other senses. And those help me in everything, developing my intuition, everything. Anything residual from the accident? Any kind of brain injury effects that you're still experiencing today? You know, I would say that my brain when I wake up is completely different than the brain I have after I exercise. I am committed to exercise every single moment, every morning as a brain exercise for me. And if it's 45 minutes or if it's an hour and a half or if it's I'm a long bike ride, I'm still on my bike. I have wow. to do that. And I can literally feel the neurochemistry change in 17 minutes. My thoughts will change. I will come up with solutions I never thought I could have. I will become a positive human being and speak with other human beings. I have, it changes me completely. And a lot of people say that, regardless of having brain injuries, of how good exercise is for your brain. It's so important. Daniel Amen talks about it, and John Asaraf, and all the people that talk about brain talk about the importance of exercise. It really helps move the neurochemistry, boost the dopamine, serotonin, all the happy chemicals start to go. I'm sure you've experienced the same thing, but I am committed to it every day of my life. Yeah, I can't imagine not. I literally can't. I think my personality would suffer. Totally, right? I'm so happy when I'm moving. Yeah, I like, and I really like, I kind of like challenging myself, if I yeah. were to be honest. There's something about feeling like my brain says you can go here and then feeling into my body and going, no, I can go further. Yeah. And yeah. I love that. Yes, yes. And it can be done in many different ways. I mean, you, you can do that. There's a zillion classes if you are... If you're sitting, you can do exercises with your arms, with your stretching. Lots of great people talk about energy movement, like Donna um, Eden. Great memory, I mean, great movements um, that you can do for your brain. Cross crawls, all sorts of things. There's a lot of great exercises for your brain specifically to rewire your brain every single day. And I understand that you are currently pursuing a master's degree, is that right? Yes, in transformational psychology, which I love. I absolutely love. I took a little pause on it because I got so busy with the broadcasting and it's Philosophical Research Society. So it's an amazing, which is an amazing place. Where, so it's in that building there in Los Feliz? Yes, but they have an entire online program. So there's brilliant teachers. Raymond Moody was one of my teachers and that's actually how I met him was he was one of my professors and he was on near-death experiences and he's a incredible professor. You have to write things and turn them in and get graded on them. You have deadlines and, mm -hmm. and so forth and thesis. And, and um, he was how I learned that I had a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I was pursuing that master's at the time 
And when I learned, I was already broadcasting. And when I learned about this whole idea of going outside of your mind and connecting and that seamlessness and the indelible mark it leaves on your brain as if it just happened, you will never forget that. And the, the expanded consciousness and the connection to purpose afterwards, he had like a 21 point checklist for people because he's had, you know, interviewed that NDE experience. I went down that 21 point checklist and realized, oh my God, that happened to me. <laughs> that was my experience. And so became a big fan of Raymond's and, and we become close friends after that because I now know the work he's going into now with shared death and crossing over and coming back is wow. Incredible, incredible stuff. So an MA in transformational psychology. I love how that sounds. How yeah. close are you? Um, about so half a year away. It's a two year program. So I know. So I have a little bit more to go, but that's okay. I loved it. Really fun. Okay. I figured when my daughter goes to college, I'll have more time and I'll finish it with her. I mean, she'll do her thing and I'll do my thing and we'll compare notes. <laughs> and before we take a break, I just want to mention you are going to be at the Conscious Life Expo. Yes. I think, I don't know how many years I've been there, at least 10 years, 11, 12, whatever. But I've been going a really long time in covering it. You've been there a really long time. Tell me what you're going to be doing and why do you keep going back? It is so much fun. It's like, it's funny because it's on the night of the Academy Awards and it's kind of our, it's our little Academy Awards. You know, it's the who's who is all there at the Conscious Life Expo. It's an opportunity to get our consciousness community together in the tune of a hundred thousand people throughout the weekend. It is very busy, shoulder to shoulder, lots of fun, lots of, lots of love, lots of connections. I meet my audience there. I don't get to see them a lot because we're on radio. So I get to meet people, talk to people. I have a booth up near the media check-in on the top. So I have my books there and I'm doing signings and giveaways and hosting panels and Gaia is there, my network. So I'll be in their community in that, um, right at the top of the stairs. They have a, a huge space. They're always there. So I'll be in there giving away fun swag. And it's, it's just a fun space to be and connect with our community because we see each other a lot electronically. So yeah, that's why I love it. So you're going to be very, very busy. Um, I yeah. will see you there. For people who are interested, you can go to Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. Just look it up. It's fully accessible and you can get your tickets there. People fly in from all over the world to attend. Yeah. Huge hotel. And it's true. There are the minions are there. There is so many people coming in and out and they're your people, right? They're your tribe. It's fun. It's really fun. Yes. To connect with people face to face. Yes. Yes. So when we come back, we're going to find out more about Lisa being a conscious catalyst as a businesswoman. And Ultimate Visibility Formula is about to roll out again. So if it is your time, especially if you're a spiritual entrepreneur and you would like to be interviewed on radio and podcasts in 60 days or less, the Ultimate Visibility Formula is the course for you. We have a blast in there. It builds such a beautiful community and you'll get the entire system. Even if you don't have prior publicity knowledge, even if you don't know where the shows are, I give you all of it, the contacts, the shows, how to figure out what's right for you, how to submit yourself, get your package together, private coaching with me, and you do get a private session, and that is a game changer. Your speaking points, how to avoid freezing or fudging, and how to be very confident and savvy instead. So who's this program for you? Well, the program is for you, basically, if you want to be seen as an authority in your field and if you want to start to be interviewed in six weeks or less. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility to register. And there is also a video there for you that starts teaching you about how to get interviewed. And that's my free gift. So it's debbyd.net slash visibility. And if you're just tuning in after we've started, this is Dare to Dream. I'm featuring today Lisa Gar. She comes from a long line of entertainers, including her aunt, actress, Terry Gar, her grandmother, Phyllis Gar, and original Radio City Music Hall Rockette. Lisa hosts the Being Aware show on Hay House Radio and the Gaim Inspiration Series for Gaim TV. She's a regular host on Coast to Coast AM, 
syndicated multiple stations around the world and has one of the largest telesummit series on the internet. You can find out more at the awareshow.com. Lisa, are you still doing telesummits? Is that still a thing? No, we, um, we stopped doing telesummits a while ago after it got set fairly saturated. We started the whole industry and it was fun and it was great while it lasted. And it, again, it was another platform to get as many people the visibility as, as possible. And it was really, really great. I had Wayne Dyer on and, and Bruce and all sorts of great people that got to, their messages got out to millions and millions of people. It was really, really great. We did it for about five years. It was a powerful time. I loved it back then in the good old days. I do. Before it got saturated, as you say, when there were purists such as yourself, just a handful of hosts who really knew how to feature spectacular people. And we had so much as an audience access to them, calling in, engaging with them, experiencing their healing and their gifts, and then getting packages. If yes. Needed deep discounts. It was really great. But like any good idea, it became commoditized and somebody came up with formulas and how to create your own summit and as a lead magnet, it was a good idea at the, you know, for someone to move it into that direction. It definitely saturated itself though. And now, but look, we're in an environment where people just, we want people to get access to as much healing content and information as possible. And the information is out there. So if you want to learn about, on my website at theawareshow.com, there's a place where it says archive, and you can just put in diabetes. You can find every guest that I've interviewed on diabetes, or there's a search function there. If you have questions about anything, it, it's, a, it's a service. It provides information to people who have it all in one place, and that's, that's great. It's not all in one place, but it's definitely the people I've interviewed and the people that I understand to be wonderful and the best in their field in one place. Now, I saw on LinkedIn that you were or once were an Emmy nominated casting agent. Yes, this- I have. Yes, I have a company that does that, that is a casting company. I've done that for 30 years. Ah, and so still. Yeah. Yep. Still, we do it's and now. So we do audience casting. So when people want to go to a television show and maybe the show needs more people to sit in the audience than are there for tickets and fans which quite often happens. There are shows that tape at 6 a.m. and you know, go until midnight and people aren't always available. We cast people to sit in the seats. Mm-hmm. And it's a very niche, 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 niche business. Been doing it for 30 years. And it's, it's challenging. It's definitely challenging just because there's only a few companies that do it. Mm-hmm. But it provides jobs to thousands and thousands of people. We pay people to sit in audiences to see TV shows. Wow. So you're getting paid to do something that's entertaining that you, you know, don't need any qualifications to do. Uh, you just need to be, you know, just able to sit and clap and laugh and have a good time. <laughs> so it's a really, it's a really cool service. Well, that's fun. So I know as a businesswoman, you call yourself a conscious catalyst. What do you mean by that? Conscious catalyst? How does yeah. that show up? Well, business can be very challenging. And when you are dealing with laws that change and people's personalities and and um, I found the entertainment industry to be quite competitive. And I was very, um, my experience of that was that I was getting eaten alive by that experience and I couldn't understand the infidelity and it, it didn't make any sense to me. And so I choose to go through business as a conscious person. Now, I do not always get that right because there are things and aspects of my business that I can't see and don't see, but somehow they wind up revealing themselves to me. So. I try to look at it and say, okay, this was an issue. I want to transform this. I want to make it the best it can possibly be. Let's change this. Let's do this. Let's adapt to this. And that's what I mean in business by being a conscious catalyst. And in the AWARE show, what exactly what we do is we bring people who are going to catalyze your consciousness, who are going to give you new information or thoughts or ideas about things or how to's or different perspectives or, or if they can do it, you can do it. It catalyzes you into thinking it is possible to do what you want to do. People that say, okay, well, you set your intention and you get your desire. Well, we think if you watch just something like a, a talk show, maybe Oprah, 
she was a great example of showing you people that could do amazing things and that they got through adversity and they were tragedy to triumph people. What I'm doing is the how to piece of it is this is how here's the five steps. Here's the 10 steps. Here's the book. Here's the course. Here's the way that you, your first step, here's how to do if you have a setback, here's, you know, and it covers everything from, you know, from, uh, I just had a really great woman on talking about addiction and, and what a, I had no idea that there was a difference between people that are gripped by addiction and casual drinkers. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And she helped me become aware of and talk about that very vulnerable place she was in that she was jealous of people that were just able to go to a party and have a casual glass of wine. And I, wow, I, I, realized how much freedom she just gave all the people that had that same experience mm -hmm. that were gripped by alcohol and that they now have somebody that sees them and they have somebody to go to, to, to ask about what do I do in this situation? And her book is great with tips and, you know, and resources and stories and whys and, oh, you know, I love that. Mm. Did I answer your question? That was, <laughs> <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> What show is this? <laughs> so what, are you, what are you talking about here? <laughs> it was a good. It was a good story. It was a good story. I went on a tangent there. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, clearly, you know, guests do that to us. We, I, I feel you. Like I get really impassioned by people. I can show up at a party, and rather than talk about myself, I can talk about this segment. Yes, it changed me just listening to this person or someone else's experience, and I, I really feel familiar with your passion. And, you know, and it's interesting hearing your story, Lisa, because we have so much in common. I came to radio 13 years ago. I was an actress and a singer professionally. And then I was doing voiceover cartoon work. Wow. And I was literally looking for ways to get myself out there. That's it. New ways to get my voice out there. Saw an ad for radio. I was totally not interested in radio. Went to do it. Was doing this music show, which, you know, was in my wheelhouse, bored. And then they said, we're going to give you your own talk show. And it's like the divine stepped in and just, oof. well, you know, here's well. the amalgam of your life, uh, dare to dream, metaphysical. And, but I came out of the spiritual closet doing my wow. show. I didn't realize wow. till then how wow. deep it was. Wow. And now look, you're being called to shamanism. <sighs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, that's what a journey. It, it, it unfolds. It really unfolds. And if you just keep following the mission and try to listen to the signs, I pray for four things all the time. Yeah. I pray for protection and for myself and my family and, and those, the loved ones around me. I pray for guidance. I pray for clarity to see the guidance. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a big piece. Because the brick, feather, the brick, the wall, you know, it all it comes in different forms. The guidance does. I pray for the clarity to see what the universe is showing me. And, and the, the other thing I pray for is action in the supportive action. Yeah. And yeah. And the, and what you're doing there is you're going into that place of listening to the guidance, to the divine, to that download that came in that said, you need to be doing this. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. And you say yes to the universe and you say, okay, I can do this. Can you give me protection? Can you give me guidance, clarity to see and hear the guidance and action? Yeah. 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 I, and you know, and the divine has a great sense of humor because they know that they need to, I'm a sign person. Like it, it's really works well for me. My mother has Alzheimer's right now. So I was recently cleaning out her entire apartment in order to move her somewhere, her oh. facility. I'm cleaning out her place in Santa Monica and going through a ton of stuff. And I was going through her photos and I found a picture of myself I'd never seen before, do not recollect. And there I was dressed up. I had braided my hair. I had a little fake tiara. I had put together some tools. So I created a, a cape <laughs> and I was standing so stoically like some priestess, some Mayan priestess, Princess, yes. long dress and a belt. And I mean, clearly I had outfitted myself, <laughs> but I went, that is a sign. That is a girl who at nine years old somehow had shaman in her and was dressing like that. 
And I keep that on my cell phone. That's the first thing I look at at my lock screen to remind myself, okay, new oh, mission. That's another, that's another prayer I have. And to be honest with you is to remember who I am every day. There's so many things out there that can knock us off our path. There's people and there's things and there's events and there's news and there's relatives and there's all sorts of things. To remember who you are is such a prayer all the time to remember how am I speaking to this person and how are they hearing what I'm saying? How, what am I saying here and how's it impacting this person? Danny Brinkley talks about this end of life review that you, I didn't experience this when I went through my NDE, but he talks about going to the tunnel and then you see all the people you've ever impacted on in your life. Whether or not that is true, it is a great lesson. If you really look at people and you look at how they are receiving what you are saying and how you are behaving, the impact you make in the world consciously is very important. This comes from you know, pay, being a parent too. You're constantly being mirrored. You're constantly being modeled whether or not you know it. Your relationship to how you pick up your coffee cup is modeled. I was watching a baby watch his mother the other day, enamored by her speaking to her friend. And it was just, every, you could just see the imprint going in. You know, it's all, it's all how we, we are conscious mapping everything around us. So we need to really be conscious of how we impact the field and the world around us too. I love that. So let me be reminded today of who I am. Yes. That's very powerful, especially where you started at the beginning of this, when you talked about how when you left your body after the accident and you were in so much bliss and oneness, I'm curious when you wake up and remember to say that, remind me who I am today. What has been happening for you recently around that? Oh, Wow. Well, first of all, I've been going through a lot of business challenges because this law changed, this AB5 law changed and turned my casting company upside down and inside out. And I've been really challenged as a business person more than ever, because all of a sudden we've had to onboard 50,000 people onto payroll. It's an undertaking that I, it, it isn't possible. Mm. And I'm learning that a month in, it happened, it turned in January. And I have been pushed. and challenged and broken and thrashed and tested and oh everything that can go wrong has gone wrong this last month debbie it has been beyond brutal and i every night go to bed and say remember who you are remember who you are remember who you are so that i don't knee-jerk react to people who are wanting to accuse me or hurt me mm -hmm. i don't knee-jerk react to unfairness I don't become a victim to the law that I become a lead, that I'm a leader for my, all of my staff that's going through this insane transition with us, you know, to be a partner to my husband, who is my business partner also in that company and to deepen and thicken that relationship and not to treat him like an employee, but to treat us as equal partnering, mm -hmm. loving partners. I mean, everything I'm saying is me remembering who I am every day. Whew, it has been a whole new level of putting to practice what I preach. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And a 30 year company to get turned on its head like that is an eye opener. Every band aid has been ripped off everything. <laughs> so it's been fun. That's why I have the stress ball. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not in your mouth like a bit. <laughs> but this is life, you know, this is reality. You have to practice and learn what you, all you do and utilize it or it's for nothing. You're a fake. You sit there and you talk all preachy on the air and then go and bite someone's head off. What's that? You so know, tell me then what's your daily practice? Because besides a prayer like that, to start your alignment in the day, you must have things that really help you, even if yes. you extract yourself from your life to do them. Yeah, I, I have to push back from the desk and I have to walk away and I have to just do like little walks, little, medic, little you know, two minute laps around the backyard or something to say, okay, how are you thinking? How are you approaching this? How is this going? Who are you? Are you approaching this in the right way? Did you lose your cool? What caused that? How could you have done that differently? 
you know, at night I was going to bed going, oh, I said, oh God, I blew through that one. Oh, that didn't feel good. Ouch, that probably hurt. And then I got this great message from the, you know, I'm very connected to the divine and I have a constant dialogue going on with my guides and I know how supported I am and I know the tribe I have and I'm constantly leaning on them like God is my CEO and I'm constantly leaning on the divine intervention for everything I'm doing and I check in every night and say, did I forget who I was today? And if I did, can you please help me remember who I am the next day? And so I do that daily. You know, I push back from the email. I don't trigger off. I'm very conscious about what happens when somebody, somebody's projecting something onto me. I, you know, it's, that's the way business should be, is you should be able to rise above without being taken advantage of and to still use your voice and to be empowered to use your voice and push back when it's necessary but in a way that is, you know, strong and stern and not just take it as a woman. Yeah. So it sounds like you have a divine board meeting. Oh, the, yeah. of the, the evening when you're letting things go that you sit there with your divine CEO yes. and your guides and counselors and just around the boardroom get yes. to have that conversation. And every morning as well, I won't get out of bed until I've had that connection with the divine mm -hmm. to pray for the day to set my intentions for the day. It doesn't matter if an alarm goes off, if the kid needs to go to school, I have that few minutes mm -hmm. to myself with my connection with the divine to pray for that day and to set my intention and to feel good about today so that I can go into the day feeling supported and feeling that I'm praying constantly for protection, guidance, the clarity to hear it, and the ability to act. Protection and guidance, the ability to hear it, and the choice to act. Man, that's everything. Let me tell you, you cannot have any component of that without the finale, because you could know everything, but without choosing, oh God, and I know this so well in my life, without choosing, it is nothing, and it will not be created. I mean, occasionally, we have some really divine manifestations, obviously, yes. that come to us, but really, we we are the attractor, the actor. So, so important. The other thing I loved about what you shared, Lisa, is badass boundaries. I found through my mother's Alzheimer's, part of my healing journey has been about having a voice because people in my family will, and let me tell you, no, I'm so blessed like to have my uncle who's super involved on the East Coast, nice. my brother's super involved on the East Coast. I would be buried even though I'm the only one here. However, I still need a voice. I still need to tell people when I cannot, or this calendar will not work, or something else needs to happen, or I've done enough for the time period. Yes. Yeah, it's so important. It is very important. As, and as women, we tend to maybe not say something or not speak up. And that was very big programming from the past, from our, our mothers from the 50s. And we, you know, we have an option now to change that for our daughters. And it's very important to learn and to teach them, use your words to get what you want. That is my motto with my daughter. Use your words to get what you want. You're not going to get what you want unless you say it. Mm. Use your words to get what you want. It's a motto in our house. <laughs> I know she's a firecracker. Boy, watch out for that one. <laughs> it's a great lesson to teach young girls. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, when we come back, we will be finishing up with Lisa and finding out ultimately what does she next dare to dream? Folks, if you'd like to be part of this podcast, Dare to Dream team, you can go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, donate money, a dollar, a cup of coffee, whatever it is, because you help sustain this show. The object of the show is to show you there's no way you can fail if you're choosing to do what's in your heart. So what would it take for you to feel completely bold and free? And as Lisa's saying, be in conversation, know what is yours. And if it inspires you to do, then take action and make it so. So please consider being part of this team at patreon.com slash dare to dream. And if you are ready to learn how to be interviewed on radio and podcast, and you'd like to register for the upcoming course, do so at debbyd.net slash visibility. I'm interviewing Lisa Gar. She is host of The Aware Show and author of Becoming Aware. You can find out more about her at theawareshow.com. 
com. And Lisa, yes. this is Dare to Dream. So <laughs> what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I, one of the things I'm really excited about is I have created a media mentoring program and it is more, it's very complementary to what you're doing in terms of helping people. I'm a bit of a story whisperer. I can hear somebody's story and teach them how to present that story in a way that can help the most people. And thus they attract the right people to work with them if that's what they want or to read their books or to speak in front of. And it's a matter of, it's just a, a formula that I've come up with as a result of doing this for so long and listening to so many stories done right, done wrong. And sometimes I'll take over for a guest and tell their story for them because they're so in it. They can't see how it can help so many people. Uh, and so what I have created is this kind of proprietary formula. That's, it's a, it's a, a graph and it's a program of how to, I work with you to get to extrapolate your story, to really find out what were the moments and the turning points in your life that made the biggest impact on you. Some people say, I don't know my story. We go through chunks of your life and we split it into the first 20 years and then the middle 20 years and the future. And we go through there and we find out what has turned you and defined you and what did you do through your hero's journey, Shiro's journey around changing that and then where are we going in the future with it? And that's, that then takes somebody on a journey of their own life, helps them put their story in order and to just bring up the most important pieces from it. And in telling that story, catalyze somebody else to realize this is what you did in order to make these changes, to create the life that you want to create. And here's how I can help you. And so either it's on a, you know, we take that whole entire story that I help you craft and put it on to a video and then you can see it on, you can use it on your Facebook page, you can put it on your website, you can utilize that two to three minute crafted story mm. to bring in people that can work with you that are in affinity with you. It's a rapport builder. It's, I mean, people oh. call it you know, I mean, you have, you have to, if you're in business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're interested in speaking on stage, if you're an author, if you want to be interviewed, yeah. if you want to network, be on panels, like anything that gets you out there, it's so important. And so are you working, Lisa, with people privately or is this a group? Yes. On Zoom? yes, I do it in both ways. I work with people privately where there's three sessions and if you go to the awareshow.com forward slash media mentor. There's a three session program where it's three hours one on Zoom and we record the Zoom sessions and we help you, I help you unpack your story, get into the specific graph and choreography that I kind of have for stories because I see stories as a finely choreographed dance. And um, it's kind of like a swan lake where it reveals itself mm -hmm. without knowing the choreography. Um, and then I get, and then I help the final session of the two to three minute presentation and then get you to videotape it either on your page or Facebook or wherever. So that's the full program. There's another part where I just help you with your story. So if you're further along in your career or you just want to reform your story and help you put it into a format of a video to get it up onto your social or website or wherever, there's that way of doing it. Or I work with groups of eight and we're on Zoom and we work on each other's stories and it's really magical. That's really fun where people ex help with other people's stories. And my God, people's stories are amazing. I mean, they yeah. don't even know it. They don't even know it. I spoke with this guy who's a relationship coach and he is a relationship coach because he went through a very tragic divorce and where his wife took his three children across the country and he didn't see them. And it was just broke his heart. And now they have created a second house where the wife had, you know, he and the wife co-own where they have their holidays and family dinners and once a month they'll all get together. They both live with their perspective um, families. And it's just like, wow, really? <laughs> but everybody's one happy family every now and then. And it's great for him to, you know, really have a place to go back East where they all live and feel connected. So just, you know, people create neat things to help themselves. And as a result, they tell their story and it helps other people realize what's possible. Can you just share a couple of elements? What makes a spectacular story? What is it that you look for that creates that standout 
story that also moves the audience, helps the audience connect with whomever the storyteller is and know, I want to know you more, work with you, be with yes. you. Yes. Yes. It, for, it starts by asking the right questions of your audience. You know, what would you like to have, uh, would you like to stop hiding? Let's use the voice, for example. Would you like to learn to use your voice? Did you, were you maybe taught as a little girl that you needed to be seen and not heard? Were you always watching your mother not stand up for you or herself because she cowered in the face of strong men? I had an experience, and I'm not talking about myself, but this is where I would go with that. When I viewed my mom, not uh, one of my clients, uh, her mother never stood up for her. She always, she was unfortunately abused by her father, and she learned as a result of that to go through this journey of learning how to stand up for herself and to help her community, mm. she's from Korea, learn how to speak up and to be women in Korea and to have a voice very unheard of at the time and she took that then moved to america and is now teaching young girls here or from korea how to speak their voice and use and, and have their truth and to do it in a safe environment oh. and this is you know it's just like that's how a story unfolds yeah. it's beautiful it's tangible it shows deep connection it shows tragedy it shows resilience it shows your journey and it shows how i can help you mm. and it's turning your mission what you went through your your message into your miss mission your mess and your message into your mission anything you want to say here at the end lisa that's i mean this is do what you love do what you love and it will unfold itself for whatever reasons that you're doing it and you can keep your day job, but do what you love also. And you will find that it expands and it helps people. There's a formula that I, for success that I have extrapolated from these thousands of interviews that I've done. One is to tell your story, which is so important because it helps people identify with you. And the other thing is to turn that story into your career in some way, to catalyze that story into your career. And the third and important element is to help others with it. Oh, thank you for sharing your brilliance today on the show, Lisa. Thank you for the opportunity, Debbie. It's wonderful to meet you. And to, I get to see you at the Conscious Life Expo. I can't wait. It's been yes. amazing. Okay. Yes. Well, I end today's show with this quote from Mahatma Gandhi. It is health that is the real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the show and tune in to the upcoming interviews in the following weeks on this number one transformation conversation. You'll be able to see me engage with James Redfield from the Celestine Prophecies, the channel Paul Selig, and third time on her show, Dr. Sue Mortar. Okay. And if you're enjoying, I know she's amazing. I'm just, I have a girl crush on Dr. Yeah, Sue. Yeah, she's amazing. She's incredible. Yes. You I want to tune in to hear that. With her as a co-leader, and she's so much fun to lead with. She's so much fun. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. You're doing a year. Of course, you're doing a year of miracles. Didn't even occur to me yes. with her. Yeah, and that's Our something team. else you can engage in with Lisa, not to be missed. She's offering so many beautiful things out into the world. And if you're loving this podcast, but you'd like to see me and the guest animated, doing our thing and engaging and syncing up here, you can go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And remember that the secret of success, as always, is the courage to begin in the first place.